I didn't really have any preconceived notions of NAS. Uh, I'd never been to a music festival before, so this is all new to me, and there's a lot of people, as expected. I always wanted to go to Coachella when I was younger, and then I got older, and I realized that you know, you're surrounded by a lot of people, and that's not super ideal to me, but you know, it's fun. It's actually great so far. We have like great accommodations, and it's been fun. Yeah, I think uh, initially I was just drawn to welcome because, I mean, obviously it's a different approach. I think beyond anything, Jason just gives us a lot of autonomy, which he was smart to do right off the bat. Uh, I mean, when I got on, I was going to school, I was living in Arizona. A lot of brands that are really California-centric, they really want all their writers in California. And as we've seen now, the tides have kind of shifted and there's brands that are popular in Europe and hugely influential in the States, and I think that that's an asset to them. And if anything, uh, not to say that California skating has gotten stale, but people like seeing skating from all over the world, you know? When I grew up skating, that if you were a European skater, you had to make it in the States, and now it's interesting. We were just in Germany talking to the German skaters, and it's like, no, actually, like you're better suited to kind of stay in Europe and do something here, and you can have influence in the States, you know? And obviously the internet's kind of leveled that playing field too. I'm very thankful for the way things worked out. Uh, again, I kind of wanted to do things at my own pace. Uh, I went to school, I wanted to graduate. I wanted to do things in Arizona. I don't know, I kind of wanted to work at my own pace and uh, in the place that made me feel comfortable. And so I don't think I would have been able to adapt writing for the companies that I was writing for back then. And uh, fortunately, around that time, skating also kind of changed, so it worked out for me. And, you know, I think Instagram and YouTube, all of the social media platforms, they kind of gave you an opportunity to produce content and stay relevant while not having to necessarily, you know, be in California, I guess. Uh, so, I guess like four or five years ago, my friends Bobby and Tim were running this small after school program, just kind of, they were taking old boards and, you know, refurbishing them, giving them back to a community center. And I was just at a time when I was going back to school and I'd spent so much time skating and kind of focusing on myself. And I was like, I really need to do something that is maybe socially responsible or something, just something beyond myself. And so I got involved and the last few years, it's grown into a full-fledged nonprofit. We have a couple employees. We've got a you know staff of 25, 30 volunteers, and we're working with 250 students a week. So it's pretty rad. We get to work with a lot of refugee children, which is uh, super cool. We have a, a big refugee population in Arizona, um, and yeah, mostly kids from uh, lower-income communities. But that's uh, yeah, just a really awesome opportunity. Uh, it was really important, yeah. I think that Pierre, in a lot of ways, kind of set a precedent in skating. I think it was kind of ahead of the curve on a lot of companies, even, uh, outside of skateboarding. Uh, I mean, I know that the Soltech offices were like one of the first lead certified buildings in uh, Southern California. Getting involved there was a pretty easy fit. Um, Pierre's kind of always had that approach, whether it's uh, tackling climate issues. I know he did that film with Leo DiCaprio. Uh, beyond that, it's just nice to have some sort of relationship with an owner, you know? I mean, a lot of shoe companies, you just don't get that because they're, you're so detached from upper management or whoever runs the programs, and that's just one of the benefits of working with a smaller company, I guess. Uh, not super hands-on, but uh, yeah, they let me have a lot of influence, and. Uh, they kind of came to me and asked if I wanted to do a high top, or they were they were going to do a high top, and they wanted it to be, you know, introduce a whole line of vegan shoes. And I was like, oh, it's a perfect fit for me. Like, you know, beyond anything, that would be the most important element of the shoe. Um, I really like the design of the shoe, and they let me bring on my friend Michael Warfel, who's an artist. He does all the work for Skate After School, and so uh, we got to kind of collaborate on that process as well. So it was super rad. I was so pumped on how it all turned out.
you know, even though it's just a colorway, we did, we're actually doing a skate after school shoe as well. So yeah, Pierre's been really supportive of kind of a lot of different elements of my career. So very thankful for that. I was riding for Rasa Libre when I was living in San Francisco. And I think beyond anything, I was just most attracted to the kind of raw street skating vibe that he always brought to skating. So um, I grew up watching his part in Reel to Reel and all, I mean all the other old Reel videos. But uh, the brands that he was involved in, Ross Libre, iPath, Reel, they, uh, I don't know, they kind of introduced me to raw street skating. And so that was the most attractive element for me. And then I think beyond that, like his whole aesthetic, uh, kind of brings in all these different approaches and like and packages it for skateboarding and I think that he was uh, kind of ahead of the curve with that you know at least with iPath I see that there's like a kind of hole in the market now without iPath it's really odd uh, let me just touch on like my relationship with those guys uh, yeah I mean they like exposed me to a whole different side of skating that I you know had never experienced before uh, and I'm super thankful for that. I got on iPad through my friend Matt Price and then I was living a little bit with Jack Sabak in New York at the time and he's a good friend of mine and a mentor. I would say uh, beyond Matt Field, Jack Sabak was kind of, he was the one who introduced me to a lot of that stuff. Yeah I learned a lot from those guys. Above anything I feel like I learned from Fred like how gnarly being on the road for 15, 20 plus years is, you know, and what it can do to you and your body. And it's, you know, it's crazy. It's taxing on you. But I, yeah, but I think like on the, on the plus side, like Fred has kind of like a raw enthusiasm for life that is unmatched with anyone, you know. It, people who meet him are just instantly attracted to him. It doesn't matter like he's, I mean, famously saving monks out of burning buildings in Thailand or, you know, I don't even know. He's he's been all over the world and kind of made a mark on so many different people's lives. So I think that just the yeah, the just the positive energy he brings to skating, you know. I just liked Welcome and at that time it was kind of like when brands like Polar, Palace, Welcome were all kind of they were all just kind of interesting to a lot of people that were involved in skating, but it wasn't like, it's still at that time, because I, I mean, I was very much a part of like the establishment of skating, and it still seemed like they were kind of fringe brands. When I decided to go back to school, I had Chris Millick and a couple friends who rode for Welcome, and I was just like, oh, this seems like a good fit, and this is rad, and they're doing something interesting, and I don't want to do the whole move to California and ride for some big brand, and. Now, I didn't even know if I could at the time, and I just was like, this seems like a great fit. Like, Jason's awesome, they're doing cool shit, and I just want to be involved and kind of see where this goes. And then somehow, just over the course of the next few years, it just seemed like not only welcome, but just all of those brands kind of consume skateboarding in a really rad way uh, and just shook everything up, you know? So now it's like unreal to think about how different skateboarding is because of those brands, you know? Yeah, I think that we all just kind of wanted to make a rad video. I think the sentiment seems to be that full length videos are antiquated, but I think that they're still relevant to a lot of people. People buy them. People st still do want to watch, you know, 30 to 40 minute videos. I think if anything, uh, the constant onslaught of social media kind of it wears on you and you kind of crave like actually popping something into DVD player. Yeah and I think that we had gone through some team changes and so it was good to kind of like package everything and be like hey this is the new team and we're actually like doing something and that's the other thing with social media it can be kind of hard to to brand and package things and it's just kind of like oh you know Certain people get posted more because they post stuff and other people don't really film videos on their phones so you don't really see them as much and unfortunately unless you put out a full length video you kind of forget about those people. Uh, just filming for that for me really. I don't really have too many trips. Uh, probably some Etnies trips and we're going to wrap up filming towards the end of the year but I'd like to film stuff in probably Arizona and LA and it's been cool working on a 
uh, larger scale project, because even doing the welcome video was super budget, it was great, because it was just like, oh, we go out with a VX, but like working on Andy's video for me was my introduction to like how, you know, huge skateboard films are made, and it's a totally different world, but it's been fun, and I'm excited to see the, you know, the end product, and Mike Manzuri is a legend to me, always has been, and that'll be really cool, too, to kind of see his take on it. I've always been really involved in a lot of the videos that I've uh, had parts in, and I kind of helped out with some of the editing and just getting the trips and planning the welcome video. And for the Edney's video, it's nice to just kind of have a hands-off approach and just film stuff and see what gets used. I don't even really know what to expect. I'm sure that everyone will have really good parts. Jaws will have a crazy part. And, you know, hopefully it's rad and people like it. And again, I think that Edney's definitely could benefit from like putting out a full-length video. I don't think that there's been a lot of hype about it, and that's good. And hopefully that when it does come out, it'll be like, oh, rad. You know, I, I think that people are really uh, they want the skater-owned brands to start producing stuff that is cool and can compete with some of the, the major corporate brands, and I think people will be psyched. You know, everyone's kind of rooting for them right now, it feels like. So.